How do we actually build life-changing habits? We all need life-changing habits, but less than 20% of you will be willing to watch the video all the way through. It's unfortunate because these are the people who need the advice the most. If I was like other creators on this platform, I would give you the top 5 proven tips to change your life with a fast editing pace that's super entertaining. You would leave this video feeling super motivated, but nothing would change. You would instead fall back into old habits, never building new life-changing habits. But this is not going to be one of those videos. Because in this video, I'm going to force you to actually take action, to make a change by giving you the four laws that you actually need to start building good habits and getting rid of bad ones. So you better pause this video, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and get ready to take some notes. The truth is that we're conditioned to gravitate towards certain bad habits, even if these habits are destroying our lives. This is the first place that we have to have a serious conversation and that's about your bad habits. But this is only the start, as by the end of the video, you will know not only how to get rid of bad habits, but how to actually start developing good ones. So get comfy because this is gonna be a long one. This video is going to be heavily referencing a book called Atomic Habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones by James Clear. I just finished reading this book in anticipation for making this video, and I was absolutely blown away by the sheer value that this single book could provide. I'll have a link in the description to buy the book on Amazon for those of you who are serious about developing life-changing habits, as this video, although my best effort, cannot do the book justice. The Four Laws of Habit Building Law 1. Q. Make it obvious slash make it invisible. This law is built on the foundation of a very empowering belief that motivation is overrated and your environment matters more. I say this is empowering because for most of us, we feel like we're prisoners of our own motivation. We want to build better lives, but we just don't always have the motivation to do so. You, like nearly 30% of kids ages 8 to 12, may want to become a YouTuber. But as anyone who's tried to become a YouTuber knows, it's not that simple. Or at least to become a successful one. You need to know how to consistently script write, video edit, create thumbnails, advertise, and even more all at a high level. Now a YouTuber is just one title. You can interchange it with anything of varying degrees of difficulties. It doesn't really matter what it is. Everything requires some level of motivation. So how is environment more important than motivation? Well, to understand this, you first have to understand what I mean by environment. Environment can be something as simple as a dirty room or even the country you live in. The question is, does your environment encourage good behavior while discouraging bad behavior? A dirty room doesn't encourage most of us to be productive. If you want to lose weight, then having a fridge full of cola isn't going to encourage good eating habits. You have the power to make your environment one that you'll succeed in. Some of us may have less power than others, but there must be something you can do to change your environment to make yourself more successful. If you want to start reading more before bed, start leaving a book on your pillow. That way when you go to bed, you'll have a reminder that you have to read before you go to sleep. This is an example of making it obvious. If you want to finally get over your addiction to sexual content, then remove the content that gateways you into the consumption of it. You need to delete apps that feed you this content. Whether that's Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it may be, it has to go or you're going to constantly be stuck in this loop that you've been stuck in for years. And this is only one of many different types of addictions that this strategy can help with. Here are four of my favorite methods that you can use to make your habits more obvious. Method 1. Use a habit scorecard to become aware of your habits. A habit scorecard is a piece of paper where you write down all the things that you do habitually, whether it's big or small. Next, you're going to write next to each of these habits if it's positive, negative, or neutral. The goal, like I said, is to become aware of all your habits, so that you can finally start making an effort to get rid of bad habits and start reinforcing good ones. Method 2. Implementation Intentions An implementation intention would be saying, I'll work out at 10am in Planet Fitness. Using this formula allows you to create a more concrete plan for where, what, and when you're going to do something, which makes it more likely that we'll follow through with doing it. Method 3. Use habit stacking to start new habits easier. Habit stacking like implementation intentions uses a formula. An example of habit stacking would be, after I work out, I will go for a walk. Now if you stick to this every time you go to the gym, then every time you go to the gym, you'll also be going for a walk. Method 4. Design your environment. Now, I got a little bit ahead of myself here, but this is also, like we discussed, a very important aspect of habit building. Design your environment to be one that you're going to be successful in. The basic idea of the law is adding cues that will make you do good habits and being able to also remove the bad habit cues. But this next law isn't about cues. Instead, we have law two, craving. Make it attractive slash unattractive. This law is about realizing the truth of what a habit is and why you crave it. Once you know this, you can change your perception. If it's good, you need to acknowledge all the elements that make it good, making it attractive. If it's bad for you, then you need to do the opposite and acknowledge all the elements that make it bad for you, which is making it unattractive. An example of this could be a smoker. If you smoke, then you're probably aware of the negative effects of smoking. And these negative effects are probably what makes you want to quit. 
Whether that's cancer, heart disease, lung disease, increased chance of stroke, all of these are direct effects of smoking. And instead of trying to ignore these cold hard truths, you have to accept them and let them rack inside of your brain, hopefully making smoking seem less and less attractive. The opposite example would be to look at someone who goes to the gym. I doubt they just go because they like lifting heavy things, although there are people like that. They go because of a multitude of health benefits, making this a very attractive task. Here are my three favorite methods to make a habit attractive. Method 1. Use temptation bundling. Pair an action you want to do with an action you have to do. This can be really helpful for doing the activities that you really don't want to do. The idea is simple. Do the activity you need to do and as a reward you get to do the activity you want to do. Now, in my personal opinion, I think this activity is best reserved for the things that you really don't want to do. As if you use it for everything, you'll end up spending half your day doing things that you want to do, but that also means you'll only be spending 50% of your day doing things you need to do. I also see this more as a short-term solution, as we should be working towards enjoying or at the very least tolerating tasks that we need to do. And if we're only ever doing these tasks because we get a reward at the end, we'll never develop the true respect for the tasks that we need to do. Method 2. Join a culture where your desired behavior is the normal behavior. Like we've previously established, your environment plays a huge role in your behaviors. If you wanted to be more kind and more selfless, then consider joining a nonprofit, as the people that are in there are probably going to be those types of people, and eventually they're going to rub off on you. Method 3. Change the way that you speak about doing these habits. Many of us say these things in our head like we have to go to the gym after work or we have to get up early. We're already deciding in the way that we're speaking that these tasks are bad and that we don't want to do them. Instead, try saying something like, I get to go to the gym or I get to go to bed early and realize that it's not such a bad thing. Instead, it's quite a good thing. Another way to look at this would be in terms of gratitude. A lot of us take what we have for granted having a fancy gym to go to, or having a comfy bed to sleep in. Gratitude is one place where I think we could all get better, and that includes myself. So those were three of my favorite methods of making it attractive. And with that, let's get into Law 3. Response. Make it easy slash hard. This law is one of my favorites because it's so simple and in some ways seems too good to be true, but it's truly as easy as said. So here are my four favorite methods for making it easy slash hard. Method 1. Reduce friction. Decrease the number of steps between you and your good habits. Alternatively, this would be increasing friction for bad habits. An example of decreasing the friction that it takes to go to the gym would be to go to the gym on the way to your work. Then you can go to the gym and then go to work or vice versa. Of course, the opposite would be to choose a gym that's far out of the way, making it unappealing to go before or after. This would be increasing the friction required for the task. Another creative way of increasing friction would be for those who play a lot of video games. Increase the friction by unplugging and putting away your console after each use. This will make it so the next time you want to go and play your console, you actually have to think about it as you have to take it out and then set it up, rather than just sitting down and being able to play right away. I really like this method because it's pretty easy to integrate and you can get as creative as you want with it. Method 2. Master the decisive moment. Optimize the small choices that deliver outsized impact. You can look at this method basically as investing, realizing that small choices can have big impacts. You could buy the cheap mattress and save some money, but what are the consequences if the mattress is terrible? Is it years of bad sleep? Now imagine how big of an impact that would have on your life. This can also be looked at through the scope of a single day. Let's say you start your day off by going on Instagram, and after a half hour, you finally lethargically get out of bed. This one decision ended up setting up your day to be a lazy and unproductive one. Now of course this doesn't always happen. You could get out of bed and still have a very productive day. But the idea is realizing that small bad decisions can lead you on a path of more small bad decisions resulting in one big bad day. Method 3. Use the 2 minute rule. Downscale your habits until they can be done in 2 minutes or less. This is the method that I thought was seriously too good to be true. The idea is that it's better to build a habit by doing it for only 2 minutes and then increasing it over time than to go straight out of the gate trying to go for a 20 minute meditation routine or whatever it is. The reason why it's important to do this is because we're far more likely to build a habit if we don't break the chain. Meaning that if you just do a habit for 2 minutes, you're keeping the chain linked. You will better build the habit rather than had you gone for the 20 minute meditation routine that you did inconsistently. I like this because we all have bad days, like the really bad ones, where we couldn't care less about doing our daily meditation. But the thing is with this method, all you gotta do is 2 minutes. And as long as you do the 2 minutes, you're gonna keep the streak going. The moral of the story is that doing something is always better than doing nothing. Method 4. Automate your habits. Invest in technology and one-time purchases that lock in future behavior. I guess I jumped the gun a little bit with the story of the mattress that'll save you a lifetime of sleep, as some of these methods do slightly overlap. But I'll give you the example of signing up for a yoga class in advance that you've been wanting to take for a really long time now. You do it in advance, that way you're forcing yourself to commit to going. 
because if you don't go, then you're going to be wasting money, and nobody likes to waste money. The other side of this method is to automate what you can, because automation will always be better than our inconsistent memories. Any of things like automatic saving accounts can be huge for your future. Or having an alarm that goes off at 9am no matter what, to keep your sleep schedule consistent. That way you're forced to go to bed earlier or else you're going to be waking up with not a lot of sleep. Lastly, we have Law 4. Reward. Make it satisfying slash unsatisfying. This law I feel like can go easily underappreciated by many as we like to act tough like we don't need to see some type of reward to get the work done. But the truth is that we like seeing results. And in some cases, seeing results can mean the difference between whether or not you continue doing something. This is why we need these four methods. To make sure that our good habits stay satisfying and our bad habits become unsatisfying. Method 1. Use reinforcement. Give yourself an immediate reward when you complete your habit. For some, you may be getting a little bit of deja vu. As in Law 2, Method 1, we talked about the idea of temptation bundling. This follows the same idea, which is rewarding yourself for doing a tough task. But like I said, I believe it's best to reserve this for the really tough activities, as I believe it's beneficial to try to build a tolerance or even a liking for some of the tasks that we have to do on a daily basis, making the task easier and overall making us happier. Method 2. Make doing nothing enjoyable. When avoiding a bad habit, design a way to see the benefits. Now, if you're like me, when you first heard this, you were a little bit confused. But essentially what it's saying is avoiding doing a bad habit in itself is super beneficial to us, even if that means doing nothing. And the truth is, doing nothing will never last forever, as we chronically hate boredom. And if we remove all forms of instant gratification from our life, perhaps the things you're avoiding in this case, you'll start to gravitate towards forms of delayed gratification, like drawing, reading, playing an instrument, the activities that actually benefit your well-being. Method 3 and 4. Use a habit tracker. Keep track of your habit streak and don't break the chain, and never miss twice. When you forget to do a habit, make sure you get that back on track immediately. A habit tracker is essentially a piece of paper where you write on one axis your habits that you want to do, on the other axis you write the amount of days that you want to track. You fill in a box every time you complete the task, and for every time you don't complete the task, you leave the box blank. This method of using a habit tracker is so helpful for so many reasons. For one, of course, you have the constant reminder to do your habits. It also is a form of satisfaction, as every time you fill out the box, you get a little bit of satisfaction. And on the other opposite side of it, every time you don't get a fill in the box, you get a sense of unsatisfaction. It's also concrete proof of the work you've put in. I think this is a really great way of building habits. And like I said, I'm going to force you to take action in this video. And that's going to happen right now. I'm going to beg you that out of everything I've told you in this video, you do this one thing. Don't be like I used to be. Don't act as if you're too good for a habit tracker. Or don't be too lazy to do this. You can make your own DIY habit tracker on any piece of paper or even use technology if you want to, but I highly suggest using a piece of paper. You need to start today. No. You need to start now. And you know, one day you might fumble your streak, and that's okay. But like I said, never let it happen twice. Get your streak back up and going as fast as possible. Wow, this was an absolute beast of a video. Easily my biggest project yet. I hope you took some notes that will help you for a lifetime. And if you didn't get anything out of this video, just know that there's no one else to blame but yourself. Because I can't literally force you to take notes. I can only tell you to do it. So if you don't, it's on you. I know this was a long video, and if you made it this far, I'm truly proud of you for taking this much of an initiative for your own well-being. Feel free to save this video, to watch it back whenever you need a reminder, or if you just want to take better notes, or perhaps take notes for the first time. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate you leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to know when I upload next. And please feel free to leave a comment as I truly do reply to every single one. I also am going to have a Ko-Fi link down below where you can go to support me so that I can keep spending a lot of time on videos. We have tiers and exclusive benefits as well, like getting your name placed at the end of the video. I'm also going to have my blog linked down below where I've been doing a chapter by chapter review of Atomic Habits, and I'll also be releasing a whole book review soon, as well as all my other social media links are going to be linked down below. But you know something that we could all do better? Living in the moment, and that's exactly what I talked about in my last video. Or check out the next video I'm working on, which is how to actually succeed on YouTube.